May we all trust in the provision of our Lord, knowing that he's got this. He has us and our families, and he's going to lead us through difficult times in victory. I asked him, basically, how are we doing with our prayers? And he said, you're coming along. The more passion and intention you put into prayer, the more I will pour my heart of fire and love into you. That's the secret. Ask for help concentrating your heart and mind on the prayers and allow my Holy Spirit to lead you in the focus of the intentions. I was looking out my window for a moment at the beauty of the summer forest and lamenting, Why, Lord, why must this be destroyed by fire? Because it's written in Revelation that the earth will be cleansed by fire. And then I heard him say, If you could see what I see, you would understand why the earth must be purified by fire. After he said that, my eyes were opened to see terrible sins that were committed here in this pristine wilderness directly in front of me on a hillside. He answered my astonishment, Don't be sad, beloved. These trees you love will be in heaven with you in all their glory. They love you too, you know. But how can they love? All creation praises me. All that hosts life praises me and has awareness and being. Otherwise, how could they praise me? You are as much a part of their life as I am to you. Yes, you may talk to them, and they listen even better than your children. Everything that has life is interconnected by the very fact that I created and am sustaining all of you. Just because they are not endowed with a mouth and ears does not mean they are not aware. They have their own plane of awareness. It is written in the Psalms that all creation praises him. Therefore, they have being or they could not praise me. My precious brides, as your world deteriorates, you must be more rooted and grounded in my love and provision so that your heart will focus on others, not just yourselves. When men are hungry, they can become like savage animals. I will provide for you, but I need your prayers for them. And at that point, I had to stop and get some prayer because I felt things trying to cut me off from the Lord. And all of a sudden, the sunshine broke through in my mind and everything cleared out. Thank you, Lord, for your golden light that has touched down from heaven and is energizing my little pea brain. He continued, It is hard for you to hear these things that are going to happen on earth. Try to keep them in perspective. The perspective of cleansing the soil of destructive microbes so that new life can spring forth. Claire, if I were to plant healthy seedlings and seeds in the earth at this time, they would be choked out by evil, by weeds and decay. First, I must clear the ground, sanitize it, and work it over until it is able to receive new life. Remember, I told you, all the creatures get to go to heaven, leaving this darkness and human contamination behind. Please, Claire, let that console you. Yeah, I'm a tree hugger. (laughs) I admit it, I am a tree hugger. I answered him, yes, Lord. And he, he changed the subject. He said, there are some in the community who have stepped back from caring for it. I gave you this land, these buildings and resources so that you could live a decent life, but not so that you could sit back while others do the necessary work for the community. And I have to say here that sometimes I see people working double hard and then sometimes I see them disappearing. There's a balance. 
Jesus continued, I want you to understand that when you withdraw from work and go to pray, I do not hear your prayers because you are not being honest with your time. Others must do twice as much work because you are absent. If you want to grow spiritually, you must give of your time and energy for the sake of others. You cannot withdraw into your own little world and expect to grow in holiness. Many of your emotional problems are coming from the sin of sloth. Satan opens the door with sloth. Hey, it's okay. Take a little time for your body's necessities. And when your focus shifts to yourself, you become absent to your brothers and sisters in the community, expecting them to do your portion. That's not the way it works, my sons and daughters. You lose a great deal of integrity and progress by sloughing off. I have to lead you around this mountain again because you didn't do your job the first time, but selfishly let it for others to do. This means you do not get to go into the promised land, but stay out in the desert on your own. This is how Satan works. He encourages you to step back a little every day until you begin to become self-absorbed. And then he works you over with guilt. A lazy friar is a condemned friar. You are bringing more condemnation on yourself so that the adversary can really take you down until you feel so guilty you withdraw from others. Anytime you start on this downward spiral, you become depressed. A person that does not give of himself to others is a depressed, downer person. A person that spends his time picking up slack and helping others, doing what needs to be done when he sees it, is a happy person, growing in integrity, ready to receive many more graces from me. The lazy steward is thrown into the outer darkness. That's what depression is. I'm sure that talks about the talents that were given. And one man went and buried his talents. And he was thrown into the outer darkness. And that's what the Lord is saying here. Depression is the outer darkness. You open the door to that by being self-centered on your body, your moods, your needs, your struggles, your likes and dislikes. The happiest people in the world I can use mightily because they have no likes or dislikes. They are always ready to do their master's bidding and are happy to do it. The more you hold back, the darker you become the more depressed and oppressed you make yourself. And of course, the demons jump in on that. It's your choice, my children. Either give without limit or put yourself in a cage of depression and well-deserved condemnation and guilt. When you put your hand to the plow, I deliver you. I give you ideas and ways to be elevated even in the midst of your work, I deliver you. And that was the end of his message. And I can witness to this. Uh, there have been many times when i just been plain lazy. I didn't want to confront something. I didn't want to have to do it. And I had to force myself. And when I didn't, i just get more depressed because I got guilty. And when you get guilty, you just, ugh. You're like flypaper for the demons. <laughs> I'm guilty, I'm guilty, I'm guilty. Sticky flypaper wriggling around, you know, inviting every demon in town. Here I am. Come stick to me. Seriously. <laughs> the answer to that, of course, is to plow through it, to do it anyway. 
We just need to be aware of the fact that we are selfish and lazy and that we can't afford to be that way. Other people are working hard, and we need to work hard alongside of them. Uh, And that's what makes community so wonderful. Everybody has a job. Everybody has something to do and contributes. And when someone doesn't contribute, it's a downer because someone else has to give up of their time to go and take care of it. But the worst part is you do become like flypaper for the demons. You really do. They just glom onto you because you're already feeling guilty. So you receive all that guilt and condemnation and you get so down on yourself that you can't do anything but sit in your sick soup. Father had an expression, pee on your paper. In school there was a little girl who would always pee on her paper. Uh, She just couldn't do anything else. So let's all encourage each other and get our work done.